Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Comcast NBC Universal Sports Tech webinar. This is our very first series of um, sports tech webinars that we wanted to share with you today just to talk about the application process. Um, so let us know you're here to the right. You'll see a chat area. Leave your email. Um, let us know where you're, you're chiming in from. Um, today we're going to have a 30-minute discussion with two of our lead intake people from, um, these are top executives, by the way, at Sports Tech, and they will be here to answer just about any and every question that you may have. So get out your notepads, take some good notes, grab a cup of coffee, grab some water. Um, we see you all chiming in, and we're glad that you're with us here today. Again, my name is Amy Wright. I am one of the uh, marketing executives on the Sports Tech team, and happy that you guys are all here today. As I said, today we're going to do a deep dive, answer all of your questions about the application process. So guys, you ready? All yeah, right. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so let me first introduce our panelists. So glad that all of you are starting to chime in today. We're just now getting started. Um, we first have Jose Vietes. He's our portfolio director here at Comcast Sports Tech. I'll just tell you a little bit about um, Jose. He's also a co-founder of Boomtown Accelerators. He's a founder of five startups, one which was acquired. He previously worked as a designer at Google. Jose was also a fellow at Access Venture Partners. He's a Stanford graduate with a background in management science, industrial engineering, and interface design. And Jose earned his MBA and master's in computer science from the University of Colorado in Boulder. He's a salsa, dan salsa dancer, I didn't know that. And he mm -hmm. also serves on the board of the Thorn Nature Experience. So welcome, Jose. Jose, you get a salsa dance? <laughs> welcome. I'm, I'm dancing right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. All right. And we also have with us our other panelists today is Jeffrey Donafield. He's our investment manager. Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? He's a strategic and innovative investment director and international business mentor with an ex extensive background in advanced technologies and advising and mentoring startups worldwide. Um, yeah. Jeffrey is experienced in building partnerships, creating and manage, managing business development opportunities, and generating a highly successful portfolio of emerging tech companies valued at, wow, that's $360 million. That's a lot. So welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks. Good to be here. Glad to chat. All right. So we're getting ready to get into a set of questions throughout the 30 minutes. We will be looking at all the questions that um, you are also providing. So with that, gentlemen, thank you for coming, showing up today. Um, we want you to just get right in. Why don't you start, Jeffrey, by just telling us a little bit about your role and what you do leading up to the application process. Um, okay. What I... My role as investment manager is to to work with uh, an awesome team, including uh, you, Amy, and and Jose, and everybody else, to uh, find and and select the companies that we end up bringing into uh, into the sports tech program. Um, I get to look at all the applications, uh, read through them, understand them, um, do background research, and uh, let's see. I'm going to quit that. Um, and, and, and then uh, get to talk to uh, all the awesome applicants and, and understand what you're up to. It's basically my job to chat on, on the phone all day with, uh, with tech founders and, uh, and, and get geeky about the, the tech. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like you stay busy. And what about you, Jose? Tell us a little bit about your role. Absolutely. So my, uh, my, I wear a lot of different hats. Uh, one of the ways to summarize it is empowering each of our startups um, whether that's uh, before or after and during our, uh, our program. So um, I'm also involved in the selections and interview process, the company review process. Uh, each of you who have submitted an application, um, we get multiple eyeballs on those, on those apps. 
And uh, so I'm involved with that during the program. Uh, it's my job to, um, to just think creatively and go through all of our databases because all of the data points in my head as to how to help you, what mentors are best to connect you with, what investors to connect with, which of our partners, which of our other 150 plus alumni companies you could benefit from partnerships from or from having them as uh, clients for yourself. So I'm always just thinking about ways to, to help you out during the program. And after you graduate, um, I'm the point person for um, uh, whatever resources you might need uh, post-program, uh, whether that's additional mentorship, uh, connections to investors or partners, uh, just, you know, existential crises about what to do with your company <laughs> next. Um, right. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the connection point to, to make sure that you succeed because unless you, you know, you're successful, um, you know, we, we don't get anything back for our investment in your company. So we want to see you succeed. We're in the same boat with you guys. Um, and that's one of my, uh, my, my roles. Sounds good. Okay, so now let's get into what everybody's been waiting for, and that's your insights about the application process. So, Jeffrey, we're going to start with you first. Okay. First question for you. What makes a startup a really good fit? That's a, that's a good question. There's so many, so many different factors that, that make a startup a, a, a great fit for us. Um, but really, it, it comes down to a couple top things and and uh you know we think about mindset a lot and and uh and and where you're at mentally and really look look at the founders and and where they're at and and how flexible they are um we're looking for companies that are interested in working with us to get prepared for their next steps learn everything they can about business their business themselves their pathway and, and aren't afraid to ask, uh, ask difficult questions and, and, and question everything and maybe even rip things apart that they're doing and, and re-envision how to do it. Um, so that's, that's, that's one big thing and that, that kind of overarches everything. We really look for um, an awesome team that is cohesive and can work together and, and, and loves working with each other and can, you know, can go hang out and, and come up with brilliant new ideas um, and then sit, sit down, you know, with, with future partners and, and make a strong showing and, 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 and move forward. Um, and then, you know, we look for um, awesome, innovative new ways to, to, to do a business, new technologies, new business practices, um, and, and just, just new fun things. Um, I mean, you know, we could, we could go into this endlessly and and i'm sure jose and i could could even debate endlessly on this but but that's that's really what it makes makes it special is is you know it's it's a it's a constant evolution and we're always looking for you know the the next awesome team to to join us that sounds good and, and you mentioned about you know you're you're looking for new technologies and so jose i, I wanted to bring it over to you um I know that there are like some different kind of categories in the business industry, a sports tech. And um, I know that our sports tech accelerator talks about seven of like those different type of verticals and categories, fan engagement. Can you tell us just a little bit more about some of those? Absolutely. So uh, the official seven verticals that we're looking at are uh, fantasy sports and betting, media and entertainment, esports venue and event innovation, team and coach success, fan and player engagement, athlete and player performance, and the, and the catch-all kind of uh, category of business of sports, which is around monetizing um, th uh, technologies around the sports space. Um, those are our official seven categories that, that we're, we're trying to focus on. Um, I would say if a company, if you're not quite within one of those, um, I'd still encourage you to apply uh, because a lot of times our, our partners may find something in between one of those uh, categories or even outside of it that, that they might still find very valuable. Um, and, and to that, it, it kind of goes into what we're looking for in our um, in companies. I'd say I'd add one, one quick thing to what Jeffrey said, um, which is kind of the stage of the, of the companies that we're looking at. Uh, we're looking for companies that are not too far away from being able to get their product into a customer's hands, okay. uh, preferably sooner than later. Um, and that's, uh, that's because, you know, if we walk you into the, into, into a conversation with the CEO of, you know, Sky Sports and they say, we love what you're doing, let's do this. And it's going to take you two years to be able to actually 
you know, did, uh, you know, um, deliver on that excitement, it's probably going to go cold and they're going to move on. Um, so, so that's one of the things we're looking for, uh, the ability to execute and the ability not so much to have traction and revenue, but um, companies that their product uh, can get into a customer's hands within a reasonable period of time. Okay. Sounds good. And I'm looking at both of your backgrounds and I see all these different <laughs> partner logos and I'm sure everybody out there through the application process wants to know what, I guess, what type of involvement do the partners have in the selection process, if any? In the, the yeah. Yeah, the, uh, so dur during the selection process, um, we have, uh, uh, so they're actually, they're very involved. Um, uh, we don't accept the company unless one of our partners says, we think they're doing something that we, we want integrated into our company uh, or that we want to in some way work with what they're doing. So they have, uh, they have a, a, a significant um, sway in, in selections. There might be a company that's amazing, that, that's going to be highly successful. But if one of our partners doesn't, um, no, if none of our partners thinks they're valuable, uh, we unfortunately wouldn't accept that company. Um, and the flip side to, to that is, if you get into our program, it means that one of our partners at least has said, we love what you're doing um, and they're going to want to find a way uh, to be involved with you and, and to work with you. Um, so, uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's both, uh, a, it's a positive, it's a very positive constraint basically that, that we have. Um, if you get in, it's because we want to do something with you guys. And, and so I'm sure the very next question people will want to know is, um, Will they get introductions? Do they have access to these partners? Like, what does that look like? Can you explain that? Whoops, I was on mute. Yes, uh, we can explain that. And they will get uh, introductions and, and all, sorts of, all sorts of fun stuff. So um, we, we're lucky to be able to work with some of the best partners in the industry, starting starting from the top and, and just getting to be partners in general with Comcast, NBC, Universal, and then going all the way to to working with, you know, NBC Sports, Sky Sports, uh, and then the individual sports uh, uh, organizations, uh, uh, golf, NASCAR, um, you know, U.S. Ski and Snowboard, uh, USA, USA Cycling, that's my awesome <laughs> hat right here. I like the hat. Yeah, there are new our newest official partner, if you guys uh, yeah, saw the announcement. Yeah, pretty great. They hooked us up with all the swag. <laughs> right. And, and they've gotten me uh, addicted to Zwifting in my basement on the bike trainer now, apparently. Um, but so, you know, work, working with them is great. And, and we, in, in, in working in the, the Sports Tech Accelerator program, you will get introduced to all or some of, of those partners on one level or another. And it, it's a huge spectrum it can go from an introduction just to have them on email or on speed dial to be able to ask a question and, and, and see, uh, see what they think about something. So say you're working on a cycling product to be able to call the, the director of sports performance at USA cycling and, and say, Hey, is this something you got? Like we're, we're, we're thinking about a new direction. Is this something you guys would ever, ever use and get feedback all the way to, and this is just a totally hypothetical example, but you know, one of our partners saying, Hey, you guys are making a really cool product. We've been looking for something like that. Uh, we want to integrate that into what we're doing next, or we think we have a technology that can help you guys out. Let's, let's bring this together. Huge spectrum, no 100% guarantees, but that's, sure. you know, that's as far as it could go. Um, and, and I mean, the sky's the limit and we leave it to you to navigate that with, with us helping and, and egging you on and working with you to, to take those next steps to make it happen. So because, you know, you have the sports techs team looking in the application, the partners are involved, are there any good tips that we may want to mention that will help someone really, you know, kind of go to the next level? Is there anything they should be aware of as they fill out the application? Yeah, I uh, mean, I, well, you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 would, I would say, and, and uh, we probably can both chime in on this, I would say um, just look through what our verticals are and, and our partners and, and think through how your technology can specifically yeah. be applicable to one of our partners. Because uh, like I mentioned, it could be a fantastic business. Um, and we've got other accelerators we run um, and, and you know, maybe there's a fit for, for something there, but, uh, but if, 
it, right, right now, if, if you want to be for, for sports tech, um, if in order to be, for it to be a fit, it has to fit what our partners are interested in. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's, you know, for example, something uh, very broad like payments, right? Um, you can think about how to, you know, maybe monetize events for, you know, you know uh, USA Cycling or for, uh, you know, USA Swimming or something um, and think through how, how your company can specifically apply uh, to those. And so if you've already submitted an application and, you know, you didn't think through that, um, you know, you can you can still provide updates uh, to your app and, and maybe frame it around around that thinking. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Jeffrey? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, we I, I talk to companies all the time just uh, two hours ago. I was talking to a company and it's, you know, it's it's a it's a question like, hey, you guys have a really cool technology. It sounds awesome. If we were to, you know, on our next call, if we're, you know, sitting with, uh, uh, you know, the director of, of the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, what do you say to them? What do you want to work with us, them on? Why is this relevant? How is it moving things forward? You know, um, rather than just being, hey, this is a cool technology, like we're working on it, or this is my passion project. Like, how do you how do you move it forward and make it relevant? That's one thing. And then on a more, um, and uh, again, Jose, you and I can go endlessly on this, I'm sure. But on a technical note, um, in reading applications and everything, it really helps to to have it succinct and wrapped up and have that one-liner be a true powerful one-liner and not a one paragrapher. Um, uh, uh, try to resist copying and pasting your entire prospectus or something into, uh, you know, into one of the fields and, and make it so that we can we can read it and scan it and get the, the gist of what's incredible about your team and, and your product quickly. And that it's easy or we feel like it would be easy to translate to the rest of our team. What's so great about, about that. Um, okay. I think that goes, that goes a long way. Okay. And Jeffrey, I'm going to ask you one question about equity and then I'm seeing some okay. really great questions over here in the chat. Um, that we're going to go to in just a second. So thanks everyone for putting in your questions. Keep doing so for the remainder of the call. But Jeffrey, tell us about the equity that sports sure. tech will take from a founder and, mm -hmm. and any benefits, funding, anything that you feel that they need to know. What does that look like? Yeah, certainly. So we take um, between six and 12% common stock equity. Um, and we specifically only take common stock. We don't take a preferred class of stock. We really feel like that aligns us on the, the equity and the deal part of the, the, the business um, to be your true partners in the real success of your business. Doesn't allow us to just get out early or whenever we want when there's a little lift. It, it really incentivizes us to really be your true partners. And, and uh, and, and gives us a great position to both be in to, you know, say after the program to continue to work with all of us and, and most notably who, Jose, who, who works with our mentors to continue to, to work within our network and, and use benefits and, and everything. So that's, that's kind of how we, how we think about that. And in return for, for that, the, the equity, um, you get to come to Atlanta, go through our, our 12 week in-person program, uh, uh, individually customized classes, workshops, lectures, uh, massive mentor network, including um, getting to work with lead mentors and, and all sorts of different mentors who will actually proactively reach out to you and take as much time as they can get because they want to work with you too. Um, working with, uh, with our partners and brands, uh, like I mentioned before on that scale, anywhere from casual phone call to full on integration. Um, you know, getting to pitch at, at, at demo day and, and all sorts of other pre-pitch events in front of both the community as, as well as investors. Um, you know, a, a whole host of, of perks that, that, you know, give you the tools to, to do what you need on a technical and marketing level and everything. Right. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, it could be the greatest perk of all, getting to work with Jose and the rest of us <laughs> for the foreseeable future of the company uh, as, as an alumni. Um, Finally, and I'm mentioning this as the, the final thing because I'm trying to distance it. Uh, you get $50,000 in, in cash. Um, wow. it's, uh, okay. it's, it's, meant to, uh, it's meant to be spending cash so that you can live comfortably, operate comfortably during the program um, so that you're not struggling to make ends meet and so that you can really focus on the program. It's, uh, I say this at the end because it's not meant to 
uh, equate with our, our, our equity. Um, it's really a holistic approach and, and looking at the benefits of the entire program, all the benefits, the, the, the partners, uh, perks, and all of that, in addition to a, a smidge of cash just to, to move you along a little bit. Okay. Now, to and me, I, that sounds totally awesome. Me um, too. But I also know that there could be some other accelerators out here, but it seems like this definitely is a step above. How would you say that we compare or are better than any other sports tech accelerators out there? I guess you really packaged it up already, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be glad to, to jump in there. I'm familiar with, with many others. And uh, actually later today, I'm giving a talk about how, um, how to choose the right accelerator uh, to an MBA okay. class. Uh, so, um, and, and that's in general, every, every accelerator you consider, you should do your research. Uh, different accelerators have different goals, uh, have different, um, uh, they, they, they fit different needs. And, uh, in, in our case, our goal isn't just to, you know, this isn't a logo parade for, our, for us to put a bunch of different, you know, logos up there and look cool. And then, you know, you come over here, go through a, a generic accelerator, graduate, and then, you know, say you went through it. Um, and that's the end of it. We, we're here to build, we're here to build good businesses um, and to help you guys be successful. Um, Cause we're successful when we have success stories of, of companies that we can prove that we ha helped and added value to. Um, and every one of our logos, every one of our partners that are up here, um, and it's mirrored, so I think they're up here. Uh, every one of our partners <laughs> that, that, that we have um, has committed to wanting to work with you. Um, and it doesn't mean all of them will be working with you, uh, but rather you will at least have one that has said, I want to work with this company. Uh, it isn't just they wanted to look cool and then put a logo up there. We're talking to lots of other partners who want to do that, but they haven't been able to commit and they're not up there. You, you, you don't see those partners up there. Uh, so the ones you see have said, we want to actually uh, work with companies. So this is not an accelerator. Uh, this is an accelerator where the goal is um, to get real connection, uh, feedback, uh, and potential integration into some of these companies, which just one conversation with, you know, the head of innovation for one of these uh, partners can make or break your company. Uh, because, um, you know, it can take years to get to that, to, to that one person and you're getting multiple touch points uh, with, with that partner. And Jeffrey mentioned, you know, a, a range of interactions that you have with them. That range depends on the partner. It doesn't mean, it doesn't depend on the company. In other words, um, if you come in here, you will at least have one partner that you will have deeper interactions with, uh, okay. that you will be meeting with and having kind of more in-depth interactions with. But if you want to access some of the ones that haven't necessarily said there's a good fit with, you still have potential different levels of access to, to some of those partners, even if they, you know, you're a, you know, I don't know, a, a time tracking app and it's, you know, you're looking at something that has nothing to do with time. You know, some of these other partners might say, okay, I, we at least want to give you feedback. So that range uh, is, is across the partners, but you will at least have one. And we're looking at on average, we're seeing one, two, three uh, partners per company that, that are actually finding your companies interesting. Um, so nice. our goal is for them to be kind of fighting over you and wanting to hang out more <laughs> with you and say, look, we actually, we mm -hmm. really made this company. We made these guys be successful, um, by, by, you know, USA swimming saying we, you know, we, we supported them. So, um, that, All that's right. what I'll say. This is uh, my summary is this is, this accelerator is to get partnerships is to work with our partners. Um, it's not just a generic accelerator. Hold on. Okay. And as far as dates are concerned, I know the program actually starts February 22nd and will go through May 14th. Um, uh, Jeffrey, question for you. Is this going to be an in-person program? It sounds like it is. Yep. It's an in-person program. And, and, and of course, we're, we're all uh, closely monitoring the, the, um, the state of the pandemic. And, and this, is, this is something that we really place a lot of uh, a lot of importance on uh, but given that we are at the spot in history where it's safe and appropriate to collect in large groups like that so all of this is caveated with that disclaimer because that's that's the primary concern is health and safety um, it is an in-person program and and you know we do that for a number of reasons. For, first of all, we like hanging out with you and, uh, you know, and, and shooting the shit and, uh, and hearing what you're working on and everything. But, but also, it's, it's an intense program. It's 
12 weeks, uh, classes, workshops, lectures, mentors, uh, events, pitching and everything. And, and we really wanna be able to have you fully present and, and there to, to fully work on, on what you're doing. Um, yeah, and you know, we, we love building the community. We, we try to build the cohorts so that it's, you know, companies coming together that are doing different things that aren't directly competing and trying to take each other down but are able to have conversations like, hey, you're working on that tech. Actually, I might be able to use like some ideas in the mind, like, can we talk about this? And, and uh, you know, have some, have some cooperation and, and camaraderie there. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking back to the, the last, uh, the last uh, cohort that we, that we ran in, in Boulder. And one of my favorite times of the week is, is on Thursdays at our, our 360 get together where we get the whole cohort together and we all have a beer and just talk about what we're working on and what we're doing in our lives and it's just a it's a great community atmosphere and that i really think breeds um breeds creativity forward movement keeps people motivated okay. and uh, it's it's a powerful thing okay and believe it or not we're we're down to our last like two to three minutes and i want to jump oh, over already really quick this was so much fun yes, it went by fast <laughs> so we have, let me see, a few questions over here. Um, Deepak has asked a question. So thank you for sending that over. The question is, how do you balance the long-term vision versus a short-term deliverable? Wait, it's, okay, at the accelerator. Yeah. I, I, I saw that question. I, I, okay. And I, and I love it because it, it actually hits at the core of why we're also different, not just in this specific uh, accelerator, but as Boomtown Accelerators as a whole. Um, our goal is not just to put, you know, lipstick on a pig on demo day and help you raise a bunch of money uh, in order to, you know, boost our numbers and say, look how much money our companies have raised. Uh, we actually think raising money for the sake of it is not necessarily in the founder's best benefit. Um, and so what we've done from the very beginning is try to change the primary customer from being the investor to being the entrepreneur. So everything we do as an accelerator, as a program um, is, is, through the lens of how does this help entrepreneurs first and foremost? And so it, it, you asked a question of how you differentiate short-term deliverables in the accelerator with long-term benefits of your company. And to us, we actually merge them together. And if a short-term deliverable is in conflict with the value and benefit of your company, we wouldn't put that in the, into the program in the first place. Um, and if you somehow identify that, we're always iterating and changing. We take that feedback and we say, okay, I can see how in your specific scenario, this, this doesn't quite fit and you don't need to do this session. Um, or if you can make the argument that it's not valuable in general, uh, we, we constantly are iterating and, and changing. We've got some of the forefront, foremost thought, um, thought leaders in design thinking, innovation, um, and, and, uh, in, uh, and, and bringing companies, uh, bringing innovations into, um, into reality, into, into fruition on our team. And, uh, and so, you know, that means that we're never, we're never sit still too long. Uh, so during the program, you get uh, concrete, uh, valuable, um, uh, actionable and things that you're working on that are actually going to be to the benefit, both short term and long term uh, okay. for your company. Um, yeah, so I know we're, we're at time, but that, uh, that I, I love that question. I can go into that for a while. Okay, great, Jose. And I saw another question over here. Someone who has actually started the application process already back in April. Of course, by now, there's been some changes. Is there a process or a rule about going in and changing your application before you submit? If you make a mistake, what does that look like with the form? Yeah, um, you, you, you can use F6S to give us updates. Um, also, you know, you can email myself or Jose to, to give us updates, um, kind of whatever, but we don't have any hard and fast rules with how you communicate updates to us. We, we love to be in touch with you. Um, and yeah, the, the F6S updates, they, um, they get sent straight to, to our emails. And, and so we do see those. Um, okay. And then we, we have a, an internal system that, that we use to make sure that we track that. So when we're looking at our whole communication history, we can see your update in there, in there too. Okay. All right. Any, any last words? I know one of the things I wanted to ask real quick, do you accept founders that are out of the U United States? Yep. Um, and then wrap up with any last minute words you wanted to say. We do accept uh, international founders. We love working with teams from all over the world. If I was, if it, if we were, uh, if it was okay to travel right now, I would probably be traveling uh, to various conferences to meet you all over the world. 
We love doing that. We love connecting people from both, you know, the accelerators in Atlanta, both the local Atlanta area, uh, the United States and the rest of the world. Um, it typically comes out to a third, a third, a third, or somewhere in there. Okay, sounds good. And, Jose and my last words are, if, yeah, my, my last words will be if you're kind of on the fence about applying and you're not quite sure, um, I'd say go for it. It's, it's worth a shot. Uh, if you've got, you know, if there are reasons you think you might not be a fit, just make that note. In the last question, there's um, a part that says anything else you'd like us to know. Just kind of insert that. You're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if I'm a good fit. Like, uh, but but it's still worth um, it's still it's still worth a shot because we never know when one of our partners says, oh, you know, we had no idea that we wanted this, uh, <laughs> and you actually might end up being uh, a good fit. Um, so so I'd say uh, go you know go for it. It's, it's worth a shot, and uh, and I look forward to meeting you guys in person soon. Sounds good. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all, all your great feedback today. It looks as if we're going to have another webinar coming up number two on next Wednesday, August 5th. And then there's going to be a third webinar on Thursday, August 11th. So thanks again, everyone, for sharing with us today. We hope we've answered some great questions. And we will see you next week. If you have yeah. any additional um, outreach items, you have the emails there in the chat. So thanks a lot. Yeah, you do have the emails. Good stuff. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. See you later. Take care. Bye, everyone.